A quick look at some recent headlines show that major companies are no longer shying away from bold climate commitments. However, it can be very hard to tell what these promises really mean. Why does a company commit to a 30% cut versus a 40% cut? Why 2050 rather than 2040? In fact, what does net zero really mean? It's a broad term, and some scientists say it has a fatal flaw. In the 2015 Paris Agreement, 197 parties, including most major countries, agreed to keep global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius, and preferably below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now to do this, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that global emissions need to reach net zero by mid-century, just three decades from today. Now, if we fail, scientists say mass flooding, deforestation, and ecosystem collapse are inevitable. So the stakes couldn't be higher, but as usual, the devil is in the details. The Paris Agreement is an amazing document, but it's just 25 pages long, and it serves more as a framework than a strict set of guidelines for individual companies and industries. In one way, the variety of net zero plans is by design. Each company has a unique carbon footprint, some based more on agricultural or supply chain costs, while others are dominated by just energy use. Big conglomerates often touch all these areas, so any net zero plan is bound to be ambitious and complicated. So to help organize these efforts, the Greenhouse Gas Protocol has released three scopes for targeting different emission types. The first scope are emissions that are a direct result from company-owned resources. Companies have complete control over this tier. Scope 2 is even more straightforward. It includes all energy brought by a company from a utility provider for their energy needs, like electricity, steam, heat, and cooling. Finally, there's scope 3. This includes all indirect emissions, so everything from employee commutes to business trips to all the goods and services purchased by a company in their supply chain. This final tier is crucial because many companies report that most of their footprint falls under it. By one measure, about 75% of Apple's carbon footprint falls into scope 3. That makes their supply chain changes a key factor in their net zero plan. Groups like the Climate Action 100 Plus have created detailed criteria for measuring the climate plans of major companies. A quick look at the assessment of PepsiCo, for instance, shows that the company checks a number of important boxes, including setting long-term goals and partially developing a decarbonization strategy. But on the negative side, the soft drink giant has not set any short-term goals, meaning by 2025 for reducing any of their greenhouse gas emissions. Indeed, this is a common issue in the business world. Many companies are rolling out plans to hit net zero by the drop-dead deadline of 2050. But for decades in between, those goals are less ambitious and sometimes a lot less clear. But other companies are even more ambitious. Bloomberg, the software company and business news site, has committed to reaching net zero by 2025. The company has already invested over the last decade in reducing their Scope 1 and Scope 2 emissions, so now they have to tackle Scope 3, which accounts for more than 50% of their greenhouse gas emissions and covers hard-to-wrangle activities like employee commuting and business travel. One way they plan to tackle those costs is by offsetting the cost of business travel, this by partnering with renewable energy projects in developing countries, meaning that rather than reducing their emissions, the company will pay a third party for a kind of carbon credit that they can use towards their emission. But this is where things get really tricky. Some scientists say offsets or so-called negative emissions are the fatal flaw of many net zero plans. Negative emissions refer to the science fiction sounding idea of using new technology to actually remove CO2 from the atmosphere and store it away. Most experts agree carbon capture will play a major role in any green transition. What's up for serious debate is how much of a role it should play compared to other options that actually cut emissions at the source. One paper from a group of climate scientists argue that basing a climate plan on negative emissions is now a risky bet because if the technology doesn't pan out exactly as predicted, the long-term models that companies base their targets on may come up short. In other words, it's a gamble. Some experts call it a dangerous distraction. Climate scientist Professor Duncan McLaren of Lancaster University in the UK told Cheddar that the main weakness of many climate models is that negative emissions appear cheaper than mitigation. 
One way to make up for these shortcomings is ensuring complete transparency. Climate activists say companies should show the public exactly how they developed their net zero plan so we can have an honest assessment of how they got there and whether the plan is up to snuff. John M. Riley, an economist with the focus on climate at MIT, quote, there's this hope that we just invent low carbon things that are so good that everyone beats a path to the doorway and that the carbon just goes away by itself. I think that's overly hopeful. In the popular imagination, at least, former Vice President Al Gore's 2006 documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, marked the beginning of a global conversation about climate change. But in many ways, the last few years have marked another watershed moment. With companies embracing net zero and governments getting behind global frameworks like the Paris Agreement, there is more consensus than ever that climate change needs to be taken seriously. But now it's time to put the pedal to the metal, and the jury is still out on whether the current wave of net zero plans will be up to the task. 2050 might sound like a long way off, but like so much else when it comes to climate change, actions made today will ripple far into the future. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to be notified when we post new videos. We'll see you next time.